Hello, this is Hans van der Kwast, Senior Lecturer at IHC Delft Institute for Water Education. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use PC Raster within QGIS and even make tools that use the operations that you can do with PC Raster. PC Raster is great software to make our own environmental models. It comes with many building blocks that are based on map algebra that we can use to make spatial and spatial dynamic models. Here you see an overview of all the operations that are available. And wouldn't it be great to have those also available in the processing toolbox of QGIS? Well, in this video, I'm going to show a way to make that possible. Each of these operations are very well documented and come with examples. And because it is in Python, we can also integrate it in QGIS. And QGIS is also now available in, in the Conda repository, so we can use it in Anaconda as well as PC Raster, and that gives a lot of possibilities. So here you see that we can install PC Raster uh, using Conda, and that it is uh, cross-platform. And there's a little instruction here that you can follow. Uh, it's for mini Conda which is a bit uh, lighter. Here I show how to do it for Anaconda. You just go to anaconda.com, click get started, install the individual edition, and then uh, click on download, and then choose your operating system and if you need 64 or 32 bit. Here we use 64 bit. After installing, you can find the Anaconda prompt where you can type these commands. And the first thing that we are going to do is to create the environment and install PC Raster. Following these instructions, we can type conda create and then we give a name to the new environment. And I'm going to call this one QGIS PC Raster. And then from which channel it has to be downloaded, which repository, so from Conda Forge. And then I have to give the Python version. And here I'm going to use 3.7 for PC Raster. And that's also the version that uh, the QGIS version uses uh, that I want to install. I also install a few other libraries so you can add more libraries here and they will install in one go, as well as create the environment. So you run it. It will download all the necessary packages and start to install it, taking into account the dependencies. That's a great thing about uh, using Conda for installing libraries. Now we can go to this uh, new environment by typing Conda activate and then the name of the environment, QGIS PC Raster. And now we are in the environment. Now we are going to install QGIS in this environment. And on uh, the GitHub page, which uh, is also uh, in the description of this video, you can find the command to do that. We also get it from the Conda Forge. And we can specify the specific version. And here I'm going to install the latest LTR version. It's 3.10.10. .10. That also takes a while. I've increased the speed. It has some issues with solving the environment. But Conda then tries it in another way and then it succeeds. And there we are. And now we can just type uh, QGIS to start uh, the software. Here we see the long term release has started. And there we are. Now let's open the Python console from the plugins menu and see if we can access PC Raster. So let's see if PC Raster works. So we can type here uh, from PC Raster import and then it doesn't give an error, which means it imports uh, the library. And let's read a DEM from disk, give the full path. And that also works. Now we want to see it, so I can use the Agila tool. And there it is. So we can access PC Raster and visualize with Agila from QGIS. And I can also use uh, functions of PC Raster. So here I calculate the slope from the DEM and then I can visualize it in Agila. 
So basically we have now a much uh, easier raster calculator with lots of extra tools uh, that we can access from PC raster. So we can also write these uh, calculations to disk using a report. Let's open it now in the map canvas instead of in Aguila. So I'm going to uh, use the path. Let's use the one from the DEM and put it in a variable. And then I use this uh, PyQGIS uh, function to visualize the DEM uh, in the map canvas. So with the string DEM, it gives the name of the layer and then uh, I face add raster layer loads it. And let's do the same for the slope map. I'll directly put a string in there. Then let's call the layer slope. And uh, GDAW is added because then it knows that's a GDAW compatible format. So it knows how to open it and that works. So we can open PC raster uh, layers in that way from scripts. We can also simply drag and drop the map uh, files to the map canvas. As said, uh, PC raster doesn't store the projections, so we need to uh, identify them. Let's put our project on the correct projection. Now, because I can make scripts using PC raster in QGIS, I can also make processing scripts. And on the GitHub page, uh, there are some examples that I'm going to demonstrate here. First, I show you how to uh, make it. Now, if you download them from the GitHub site, um, you can go to your profile, and there, under scripts, you can uh, you can paste them. So all these scripts can be found in the processing toolbox, and I can edit the scripts so you can see uh, how I make them. It uses a template, and you have to fill in certain parts to uh, make it run from the processing toolbox. Now the best way to do that is to uh, just go to the Python button and say create new script from template. And there you see the template. And then basically you fill in uh, the parts that you need to use uh, PC raster and uh, define the interface. Now if you want to build um, these operations into QGIS, then you need to know uh, what they need. So let's look at the catchment function. It needs the local drain direction map and points, where the points are the outlets. Local drain direction map is the flow direction. And uh, so we can make uh, the script. Here I show what I've put in the script. I have to, of course, uh, import PC raster to get access to the PC raster tools and some uh, from QGIS that I need. Then you define the different inputs and outputs. You just fill it in in the template. And then here also you make some uh, changes to the template so it points to the inputs and the outputs that you want. And then here under process algorithm is basically what you write. So input LDD defines the path that the user gives, and the outlet and the catchment also. And then we do the reading from the map of the local drain direction map using that path that the user defined. Then uh, the outlets are read and the catchments are calculated from the outlets. And then we report it to the disk and we open it in QGIS in a map canvas by uh, using these lines. So have a good look at that from the uh, repository and see how it works. And in a similar way, you can uh, implement all of these uh, PC raster operations. Now let's apply these tools to the root catchment. So we're going to follow the catchment delineation procedure. I drag all the layers to the map canvas. There's a little bug, so I have to uh, set all the uh, projections. And the uh, DM is in uh, 4326. And we have the bounding box. So the first step is to mosaic uh, the tiles. We'll do that with a virtual raster.
So we're going to use uh, QGIS tools and PC raster tools uh, together. And this is of course just from uh, QGIS, where we can easily mosaic the tiles, and remove the ones that we don't need. I set the projection. And now I'm going to export this to a new projection and click to the bounding box. Need to change the projection, make sure the bounding box is selected and I can uh, customize here the spatial resolution to uh, 30 meters. And because we reproject the no data, can be useful to fill up uh, the no data pixels. And when we remove the bounding box, we see that our DM is nicely clipped. We set the projection, and now it's in the UTM 32 North. And uh, then uh, we need to convert this to the PC raster format in order to use the PC raster tools. So I made a tool for the conversion, which uses uh, some GDAL uh, Python scripts. Make sure you have a .map files and output. We go and I run it. And the file is loaded. When you hover your mouse over the layer name, you can see which one is which. So I'm going to remove the TIFF file and uh, set the projection of the layer. The PC Rust layers don't have projections, but in QGIS we can indicate what we want to use. And then I want to calculate the local drain direction map, which is the flow direction map in the PC Raster terminology. I need uh, to specify the output, let's call it flow direction. The DM is of course the input, and then I run it. It takes some time. Here I've uh, speeded up a bit. And there's the output. Opens nicely. I can set the projection. PC Raster uses the uh, values of the numeric pad on your keyboard uh, for the flow directions. But Agila has also a nice way of visualizing uh, the PC Raster flow direction. And as we have seen before, we can just open the PC Raster layers with Agila using the Python console. There it is, it looks strange, but when we zoom in, we can see the flow direction of each pixel uh, with arrows. And we can query the directions. After calculating the flow direction, we can calculate the stream order. And the stream order function in PC Raster calculates the Strahler order. And the input is the LDD, the local drain direction map or the flow direction map. Let's call the output Strahler, and I run it. And there it is. Set the projection. And let's uh, style it. We can use the palette of unique values, and use uh, different shades of blue. And there we see that the darker the blue, the bigger the river. That looks great. And then in order to find the rivers, we do the Strahler threshold calibration, as you can see in other videos. And we can simply use the raster calculator on this PC raster map. The only thing is we cannot write the output to PC raster uh, maps, but we can use the GeoTIFF format. There we run it. And we use the palette of unique values again to highlight the 
two pixels here which are strata larger or equal to eight make them blue remove uh, the background maybe not remove it because i want to compare also with the uh, calculation using pc raster in a bit so with the strata calculation uh, you going to compare it with the background uh, reference map to see if the rivers match so you can try it for Strahler 7, 8, 9, etc. to see which one gives the best match. This one looks quite okay. And these are all explained in other videos and, and tutorials. Set the projection. And I'm going to show you how to calculate this uh, Strahler using uh, PC Raster in the Python console. So that's also a quick way of doing raster calculations. So first I'm going to read the Strahler map from disk. And then I can use uh, map algebra. So I'll make a variable Strahler 8, which then equals Strahler larger or equal to 8. And that's a condition uh, similar to the raster calculator of uh, QGIS, which gives a Boolean map with true for larger or equal than 8 and false for less than 8. I write it to the disk. Let's give it a different name to give the full path. And let's uh, visualize it. With the same command that we used previously. There we are, now we can, we can compare both. I'm copying uh, the style. And I set the projection. And this is a verification if they completely overlap. And we see that they are exactly the same as can be expected. So there's no difference between the raster calculator from PC raster or from uh, QGIS. Now let's assume that with this Strahler threshold we have the river, the Wu River, then we need to define the outlet. And there is approximately where the Ruhr gets into the Meuse. I can use the coordinate capture tool pick a coordinate, let's pick this one. And then in uh, the command prompt, I can uh, make a file with the coordinates because PC raster needs a raster layer with that pixel, uh, which identifies the outlet. You can also have multiple pixels with different uh, ID numbers. Here I'm going to create a file outlet.txt and I'm copying the coordinates. So the format is x space y space and then an ID number, non-zero ID number. And then uh, it will create in the end a catchment with that ID number. So if you have multiple points for each of these points, it will create a catchment. But first we need to make it a map. We use the call to map tool. You can find all these tools also on the PC Raster website. It's a nominal map that we need. Therefore I use minus n. And we need to uh, fit it to the same dimensions as our DEM. So therefore I define as a clone DEM clip top map. And then uh, this one point is uh, converted to a raster that fits the dimensions. I can simply drag it to the map canvas. There it is, the black pixel. And I can uh, style it. So the red pixel is the outlet that we're going to use to delineate the full catchment. There I use calculate catchment. I see that I didn't set the projections yet. It's just good practice. It doesn't do much with it, uh, PC raster, because it doesn't need it. But uh, in order to uh, avoid mistakes, it's always good to set it. So it uses the flow direction map and the outlet to define the catchment of that point in this case. And then I run it. 
there it is let's uh, zoom out and first set the projection and there we see our catchment it looks slightly different than the one that uh, we delineate with the other procedures because this one takes a bit better care of uh, the mine which becomes its own uh, catchment and the LDD function has uh, more possibilities that I would like to later integrate in, uh, in the scripting tool interface so we can play around with uh, the fill sinks option. The flow direction algorithm combines the fill sinks with uh, calculating the flow direction. So why is this so useful to integrate PC raster here while we also have uh, the other QGIS tools? Well, in my opinion, uh, it's always great to have access to uh, to many tools. There is some overlap, but there are also tools available in PC Raster that are not available in uh, QGIS. And also the Raster calculator of uh, PC Raster is much more advanced if you want to do uh, conditions and Boolean logic and much easier to write. So I hope you like this and uh, follow me on the YouTube channel and uh, keep an eye on tutorials coming up on uh, gisopencourseware.org.